Hello. Well, here is today's project. This is, this was a freebie. <laughs> it was given to me because the print head kept crashing. Uh, it would not print. And the print heads they had were just jammed. So that is the scope of how I got it. Um, this is a Lulzbot Task 6. This was brand new in 2016. What was neat about this is, you know, back in the old days here, uh, this was a fairly large printer for the time. Uh, it had a build volume of 280 by 280 by 250. Uh, and in this case here, you can see I have uh, the print head is a modular system. So basically you plug it in, um, you know, unplug, plug it in, so to speak. Uh, and then directly supported within um, their version of Cura, uh, you would update the firmware and they already had pre-selected, you know, all these print heads. So that was kind of like, whoa, that's, you know, a very radical and convenient way uh, of doing that. And these things were rock stars. I mean, they're built like tanks. As you can see, it's a, you know, it's a big beefy machine and very popular machine for years. Of course, being from 2016, the stepper drivers, you know, are very, very loud. You know, just like my Ultimaker 2 and previous machines I had, you know, it doesn't have all the, the modern silent steppers and stuff like that. So this came to me, as I mentioned, with the print head crashing and other issues, and I think I've identified the source of that, and we'll go through that in the video. But the point of today's video is we're not gonna go crazy taking electronics apart and trying to make it you know, a modern version of today. It, it just, frankly, it's just not worth it for the build volume. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get it back up and running, and fortunately, Lulzbot is still around, so I was able to get replacement parts and stuff like that. So we're gonna go through and see if we can't get this old dog to perform new tricks. Now, you ready? Here we go. Okay, welcome back. Well, first of all, let's start with introductions. My name is Paul, and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. I'm all about 3D printing, cosplay, building R2, stormtroopers, all kinds of fun and nerdy stuff. Um, so this is my channel, and if this is the first time seeing me, I would appreciate it if you like what I'm doing here, hit the subscribe button down below. Don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. So as I mentioned, we got this freebie printer, and um, a couple of things that happened, and we'll start with the basics. So one of the first things we identified we, sorry, I <laughs> identified uh, was the print head crashing. And I have all kinds of video clips here I will show you uh, where, geez, it would, it, it, it looked like it was just gonna break itself trying to do its bed leveling procedure. It would go through in the corner where it wipes itself before it starts doing things. And after doing some research, which I probably should have done before, just plugging it in and seeing what would happen, uh, the Lulzbot is interesting because what they do on the print head is um, they're using um, the electrical conductivity is what they're doing. I'm trying to find the best words I can use here without talking over people. So essentially what this thing does is it makes an electrical connection and on the print head uh, there are little tabs where little wires go and I can show you here in some of the up close videos. And what I discovered in uh, this particular print head uh, was that it used a solid core wire and it looked like it broke uh, from the print head. So there was no connection there. The other part there, there was a switch that goes to the side here and I put that back together and, and screwed that back on there. Um, I really haven't done a lot to tidy up the wires, but the one thing that I have been able to do, and again, I'm showing you here in the B-roll, is I was able to resolve the issue with the print head as far as you know, at least being able to level and, and do some printing. And it has done some and then it, promptly proceeds to jam itself back up. So that kind of sucks, but we're getting there. The other issue that I identified right away is that the way that the tool head goes on, it is supposed to go on and then there is a small screw that goes into the front and goes in. Well, what has happened is that the previous operators of this machine, what they did is they put the screw in uh, from behind, and maybe I can capture that here with the other camera here. So, you know, that, that's where this is. And maybe the stream cam can help me out even better. So, as I get tangled up. So, <laughs> the screw here is supposed to be going in the other direction. And you can see a little bit of the burn pattern here that I've experienced as well. So essentially, long, long, long story short is someone put the screw in incorrectly and they over tightened it. 
And because this is a ABS plastic print with the brass inserts, uh, they over tightened it to the point that if you try to loosen it, the brass insert just sits and spins. Now I went through with a soldering iron, I went through with a heat gun, anything I could do to kind of, you know, bond <laughs> the plastic back to the brass insert, and that just wouldn't happen. So that was too bad. The, I mean, I did have it somewhat working. You know, what I could do is I could put the print head on there and put a nylon nut on that, uh, but it just was not very solid. So that leaves us with where we are today. So what I have today is I have a new X-axis gantry. So what we're gonna wind up doing, let me uh, swap cameras again, is this piece is gonna come off. This bottom piece, which is the edge, uh, is going to go on here. The one thing that we have to mess with, which is not a whole lot of fun, is belts. Uh, we have on the, on the back here, uh, this is where the belts uh, attach. I mean, I'll show you the piece for reference. So, I mean, technically we're not removing too many screws, but they have their own specific way. They have a little harmonic tool uh, for getting the belts tight to spec. I don't have that tool. All I can do is yank and crank. <laughs> so, so that's what we're gonna do. So that's phase one. Now the next thing I wanna mention here too that I've done, and again, I'm swapping cameras, I apologize. So the neat thing about this is the glass it came with, usually it has PEI on top of it. This one, they already removed the PEI and there was nothing wrong with that glass. I cleaned it with alcohol, Windex, vinegar, you name it. And I went ahead and I put the Wham Bam Magnet on there. And oh, by the way, say hello to Molly, our executive producer here. She's gonna hop into the background when it's not convenient. So <clears throat> a couple of things to note. So when you add a magnetic bed in a, in a uh, you know, we had the spring steel obviously in the magnet. So what we've done is from the glass, we've made this thing taller. So we'll have to adjust the Z offset on the machine uh, because the way it thinks right now is it thinks the bed is down here <laughs> when in fact it's up here now. So if we thought we were having bed crashes before, oh, by the way, and this does have the cutouts. Uh, nice job, wham, bam. Uh, so we're good to go there. So maybe that was a lot of optimism on my part, putting the bed on there. I was trying to go with the easy stuff first. So I'm gonna peel off this sweatshirt and get ready to remove some of these screws. And let me swap cameras here. Yep, so we're gonna have to remove a couple of these guys and we'll take it from there and see how it goes. I don't know how tight is too tight, but those both look good. Okay, we got this guy turned around and this guy goes right in here. And I believe this was set up to have a twist tie. So let's go ahead and add that. This is the right size or not. No, it looks that. Okay, I changed cables and this time we have USB device available. Good. So let's upgrade firmware. 
go down this and go here. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, um, I can see the print head, so that's good. So let's do a simple print. So let's go to our uh, second monitor here. Um, the material I have in here is generic PLA. Do we does he have something that's similar to that? Uh, ABS, ABS, ABS. It's not magnetic. PLA, polycast, um, standard PLA. Let's go with that. Great. Um, this is a 0.5 nozzle. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger than 0.4. Um, let's just load up a file here. What do I have on this machine? I think I moved everything over here. That's 3D print files. 3D models, I guess, is what I want. Hey, you know what? A little cube would be fine. Okay, great. Now... I want to scale this. I'm going to disable uniform scaling because you know what I want to do? I want to pull this out. And I'm going to squish you down because we'll just make a simple print. Actually, if I wanted it to be exact, let's just make you say four millimeters tall. Hit enter. Here we go. So the reason I do this is I just want to be able to get a print where basically, um, and I think this thing will let me do baby stepping, is, you know, if I do a square, it's going to be hard to see around, you know, the object, you know, because the print head is just so big. But if I do something like this, um, as it's going through here to do the infill, I'll have the opportunity to baby step this up or down. And based on how this looks, you know, how bumpy and such, I can get a pretty good Z offset. Now, there's a few things that will change that. Obviously, the flow rate, I believe, on this material, it's probably set to 100% straight out the... Uh, what does he got in here? Flow is 100? Yeah. So, I mean, we could be over-extruding, we could be under-extruding, but I think as a starting point, this is fine. 205, yeah. It does these standby temperatures because it's going to do its little bed leveling in the corners, but I think for right now, this is going to be fine. So let's uh, click prepare. Let's take a look to see how this is going to look. Um, there's my layer view. Here we go. Yeah, this one's weird. This is an old version of Kira. So, and there it goes. And let me drag this up. So yeah, so this is just going to be a very simple one, two, four layers, not much to it, but that's fine. We just need something to give us a basic idea of if we're too close or too high from the bed. Uh, so this print is going to be trash anyway, but small steps. See if we can smooth this out. Let me uh, see if I can try to show you what I'm seeing here. See, I'm trying to get that, smooth that out. Yeah, let's bring you up a little bit more. So I try to go one tick at a time, and I try to give it at least 10 or 15 seconds because sometimes it's how long it takes for it to show up here. Okay, let's do another turn. So compared to where we were and where we're at, it's way better. Okay. 
Okay, so we did the 3.6 version of Cura LE. I have installed the beta. I want to try to see how the beta does. Uh, I have the uh, ColorFab engine, which they have their own profile for. Uh, I did do a print, and this is the little lifter feet so that it lifts up the uh, Wham Bam enclosure. So there's some airflow, which is good for the electronics in here. And uh, you can see another one back there and another one back there. So it has about a, a quarter inch of clearance now. So <clears throat> the uh, print I did with uh, the default settings is 0 0.25. Being a, being a translucent material, <laughs> It's it's hard to get on camera. It does it, it printed fine. It's just that you can really see those layer lines. So we'll do another test print with engine, and then I think the next thing I want to do is I want to take this tool head out, and I have the 1.2 tool head, uh, which has a 1.2 millimeter nozzle and a steel nozzle, and that thing is jammed up. So let's see if we can loosen that up and get a print out of that. And well, from there we can see this printer's working. It did a pretty good job. All right, now let's get that tool head unloaded. Let's get the big one on and see if we can jam it and do some printing with that. Okay, the GoPro died during the time lapse, but here it is. This took six hours with a 0.8 nozzle. Would have probably taken twice that time. First layers were pretty good. Didn't look too gappy. There are little gaps there, so I don't quite have the flow right perfect, but still an excellent print. Hi. There it is. Why don't you go ahead and try it out? Okay, so first of all, I just want to say pause real quick. If you haven't checked out the description of this video, there's a bunch of affiliate links down below. Those can save you money. Do be sure to check those out. Also, full disclosure, I do get commissions from those. So the commissions I get from that help me with these videos. So I'd appreciate it if you check those out and it saves you some money. Okay, so moving on, let's review where we were at. So we had a TAS 6 and it was crashing no matter what we were trying. Every time we tried to do our print or our home or whatever to level the bed, uh, it was just crashing straight in. And we discovered, as we saw from the clips, is that this thing uses a contact, it measures voltage, w whatever wizardry they're doing in Maryland. Uh, so we found the broken wire, um, added a new wire, and this has been working great. The other step of this upgrade was the X gantry. This piece right here, I uh, had to replace that because the stock one that was on there, someone had over torqued that. And because those are brass inserts in that plastic, uh, <laughs> well, all it would do was spin. So it made it very difficult to put any of these tool heads in here. So that was replaced. The next thing we did is we went through and we Fortunately, on mine, the PEI surface on this glass bed was already gone, perfectly clean. I went through, I cleaned it again, and installed the Wham Bam surface. I put the magnet on there, and I basically waited two days so that it could adhere to the glass. And then we have the uh, PEC surface, the spring steel PEC surface, and we had that going. Now, remember, we also added more to our bed surface, so we needed to go through and went through and measured exactly how much we would have to bring the Z offset up uh, because the printer is expecting to be printing on glass and it's expecting the Z offset to be a certain thing. So we had to make sure that that was there. Also had to make sure and double check that changing the print heads because when you change the print heads, you're essentially changing the firmware. So fortunately in both cases, it saved. So that was good. Um, and then once we had um, material loaded up, I grabbed some of the Printed solid, uh, this is kind of an opaque material and it's really tough to, I mean, it looks good, but <laughs> at 0.25 layers, it's a little rough for our model. And of course being translucent, even tougher. So for that first print, I used the Lulzbot Cura LE, which is 3.6 and some change. And that printed fine. We didn't have any issues. And I was curious how the built-in profiles would work. So then I went to the next step and I started going with Engine, which is a, uh, color fab product. It's a copolyester. Now, the other thing um, I wanted to try is I wanted to see how well the beta would work, and the beta worked just fine as well. Matter of fact, uh, we created these feet, uh, which we used on the enclosure of the Wham Bam enclosure because the 
enclosure covers the entire thing. We were a little concerned. We didn't want all that heat to cook the electronics. So these feet elevated the enclosure so it could get some airflow in there. The next thing we did after we took care of engine, we did a nice little benchy. Of course, I'll give you some close-ups of these. Uh, the HS 1.2 millimeter print head, which is installed right now, uh, that basically <laughs> at a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, it's like printing toothpaste. It puts out a big bead. So the last time I tried to use it, it was GM solid. And when I plugged it in and primed it, all the stuff that was stuck in there flowed right out. So thank you, 3D printing gods. Um, and then I went ahead and I did some flow cubes and what I did is I did a single wall and I did a double wall. So I wanted to see how close a flow rate I would need for a one wall and two walls and came up with a rough estimate. I wound up around 90% flow. And then I said, well, let's go for it. So like I said, this is the, uh, this blue stuff right here is the uh, poly maker uh, material and I went through and did the cat bowl. Now what's fun about this is I've printed many of these and they take about 12, 13 hours using a 0.8 nozzle. <laughs> With a 1.2 millimeter nozzle and knock those guys out in six hours and some change. So it did a great job. I used the beta cura for that as well. I uh, wanted to take advantage of some of the advancements in cura and off it went. So you might be wondering, okay, what next? What else can we do to make this printer better? Maybe modernize it. Well, there are a couple of things actually. Um, the first would be, <laughs> this is a noisy machine just due to the age of the drivers, um, as I gave you various sound clips in the video so you could hear that. Now there's a couple of things that you could do and I'll show you on my uh, monitor here. So one of the things that pops to mind is they do offer some upgrade kits for linear rails, which would definitely you know silence things a good deal and it also improve accuracy. Uh, the only rub of course is the price. You know, you're looking at $279 uh, to do the uh, x-axis, and if I wanted to do the uh, y-axis, uh, you're looking at also $279. So um, th at, at some point, you, you wonder how much you're going to gain by throwing more money at it. But since we're throwing money at it, uh, I already have one of these. I'm currently using it on the uh, Lulzbot uh, Taz Pro XT that I'm testing, and this offers the 1.75 millimeter filament. Uh, this is also a uh, slice engineering mosquito. And what's fantastic about these is that it's a cinch to change nozzle on those guys. So it's not like you need to buy a new print head if you want to go from a 0.8 to 1.0 to 1.2 or wh whatever nozzle sizes uh, that slice offers for this. So that would be the, and again, $375. I know everyone's gonna gasp at the price, but you have to remember you're getting basically a completely assembled print head that's all set to go, and basically you just strap it to the, <laughs> to the carriage and off you go. So let's talk about those upgrades. So is it worth it? I mean, yes, you could do the x-axis here with a linear rail. You could do the y with a linear rail. And yeah, you might see some improvements. I'm not sure how much. Now, and they're also $279 each. So you're looking at just under 600 bucks to do those two upgrades. And... I don't know. I mean, that would be interesting. If you guys want to hit me with a super thanks down below or throw some, <laughs> you know, love me with dollar signs, I would be happy to do that upgrade if I have some funding to do that. If it's on my own though, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, definitely I'm not a huge fan of these Igus bearings, but if it's my money, I'm just going to leave that alone. Now, the one thing that I would definitely do, uh, is the M175 because first you'll be able to use 1.75 millimeter filament. You're also using a much newer hot end than the Titan Arrows that these guys have. The other thing you would need for the M175 is a universal adapter, which I have right here. It's a cinch to put in. You basically attach it to the tool head and then it will fit inside the TAS-6. So at least it has that upgradable you know, flexibility. So kudos to Lulzbot for you know, still supporting this machine, you know, with the ability to use the more modern tool heads. Um, any other upgrades I can think of on this that I would do? I would definitely like to find a knob that works on the button. <laughs> the, the one that I have it just doesn't make a full depress. The electronics, again, as mentioned earlier, it's not something I would want to mess with. I've done a lot of electronic swaps with a lot of printers here. There are a couple of ways you could go with this. It'd be cool if there was like a company sponsored one. Hey, if you want to upgrade to this electronics here, download this, purchase this, but I don't know how much of an audience they have for that. There are people that have put more modern TAS boards in their TAS 6s. There's also, I've seen some people that have done SKR boards in there. 
I'm not sure how easy, hard, or <laughs> the whole bit. The, the thing is, I guess what the bottom line is, is right now you have the ability just to you know, update the firmware to change tool heads. If, you're a mo if you modernize electronics, I don't know how it affects that. I, I think you would definitely affect that convenience, which is definitely one of the perks of this machine. Okay, another thing I thought of, we were just talking about the electronics and other upgrades. So the other thing I wanted to mention is, of course, I had the Wham Bam Hotbox Mega, which does cover the entire printer, but um, it has some pros and cons. Um, you you got to print those feet to get it off the ground a little bit for some airflow, and it does block the SD card reader on the side. So, I mean, you can just unzip and get in there. But I also wanted to show you guys, there are some other manufacturers of enclosures for these guys. Uh, so what they've done is their enclosure goes basically all around this part here, you know, so... Uh, it's it doesn't cover the electronics now at three hundred thirty five dollars You know, it may be in and out of your budget The one from printed solid is a little bit cheaper and it's roughly doing it's a better image here of Exactly what it's doing here. Uh, it's basically just covering the print volume and leaving the electronics out So you don't have to worry about them getting overheated uh, by being in an enclosure so Those are some options to consider as well for your setup Okay, everybody, that's it for this time. Do you have a Lulzbot TAS 6? Let me know in the description down below. I'd love to hear from the Lulzbot audience. Find out what they've done to their printers. Is it still working? What have they done? What issues have you had? Let me know. And of course, if you're curious what I'm up to, I'm always posting on social media. I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on X, Twitter, and of course the website where nerdyiscool.com. Check me out over there, give me a like, comment, what have you. I'm always posting stuff of the current things I'm working on so you get a little behind the screens action to the next video. That's it, thanks for watching and please remember, please print safe. Thank you.